Welcome. In this video, I'll be covering a project I have been working on. I call it Project Silmaril. And you might ask, why the name Silmaril? Uh, simply because when I was a kid, uh, I read the Silmarillion, my favorite book. So it's a homage uh, to that. So this is a first video in a long series kind of covering some of the features, some of the uh, tricks, uh, some of the nice quality of life that the tool provides multi-boxers. It is a tool uh, not necessarily to just bot and farm, but to allow a multi-boxer to, you know, engage in challenging content that would normally only be available uh, to full six-man parties. I live on a sparsely populated server, um, so I also enjoy the challenge of tackling that content, and that's really, it's kind of really the intent of it. So, you know, there, there's a lot in there, uh, what it can do. I'm not going to go over that now. This video is just about simply installation and how to get it um, initially configured. So, where to get it? I have a GitHub site. It's just simply, uh, you know, the GitHub at Mirdane slash Silmaril. Okay. So, you'll want to go to the releases. This lists all the releases there are. Real quick on versioning. I pretty much run a main release, which is this one here, and in in GitHub, this will come up normally, and then there's a beta. Betas are where I'm fixing bugs, adding features. Um, it's always the latest and greatest. Uh, you don't always have to get the beta. Uh, if you if you like that, or if you like to troubleshoot, or, or want to check the latest feature out, or if you're looking for some, or you request something. Uh, in the Discord channel, and I'm like, yep, I'm going to toss in, you know, I don't know, core roles or what have you. That's one of the last things I added on 2.7. Uh, you might see that in the beta, you know, and you'll see that first. But then the two point, the, the main release, like in this one, it's going to be a little bit more stable. So if you don't want to go check, you don't want to pull, um, you're happy with what you have, and it works great for you, I would probably only recommend upgrading when you get the main releases and not chase the betas. Because the beta, the beta life is, it's the, it's the bleeding edge. Because sometimes when I fix some of these issues, I might introduce another issue, right? So these are uh, volatile. They change usually at least a couple of weeks. Well, it just kind of really depends how big of a feature I'm adding. Generally speaking, at least at least once a week, um, I'm going to do at least a beta build. Um, but in this thing, uh, in this video, I'm just going to go ahead and download uh, the exe and the zip file. Those are the only two files you need. You need both of them. And when I do an update or when you upgrade, you need to grab both of them. And you need to replace both of them. Now, I'll kind of cover what you don't need to replace. Because what you don't want to do is delete all your settings. <laughs> because that would be very problematic. You can keep your settings. So when 2.8 comes out, the settings you had in 2.7, they'll load fine. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, so you don't want to do that. So here's the, here's the two files I downloaded. Uh, it's actually this, let me, uh, it's this zip file and the exe. The zip file contains all the Lua's. So what I'm going to do is simply extract all. It's going to create a folder. I created this folder, Silmaril. This is your add-on folder. Inside here is your actual Lua. And there's another subfolder with the library, as I would call it, with all the other sub Lua's. But what you're going to do is you're going to take this folder, you can copy it, you can cut it, whatever, but you're going to put it in your window or forward directory for your add-ons, okay? 
I already have one running here. You can see I'm not going to replace it. You notice this has the data folder. This is created when you run the, the Lua for the first time. It simply stores your personalized settings, right? So that's this is what it should look like under your add-ons. You're going to have that folder that you unzipped called Silmaril. It's important when you upgrade that you replace this add-on because there's a versioning information uh, that is being done, and there's a check, right? So the EXE and the Lua do a handshake to make sure they're on the right version. If not, you get a version mismatch, right? So if you see that, that means you, you either have two new or two old EXE uh, with your in-game loaded Lua. That's another important thing. If you upgrade, don't forget to unload your Lua in the game and then load the new one uh, back. Okay, so that's actually uh, <laughs> pretty much the installation. You have to put the add-on in the add-on folder because this whole thing is pretty much an add-on. Now, one trick, uh, tip, what have you, if you go under scripts, there's a file, if you didn't know, called init.txt. This is where you can load Lua's when your character loads. So right here, uh, I have a Lua L short for load Silmaril. I have others, don't judge, <laughs> but this is where you would place the Lua uh, load Silmaril so that every time you log in, you don't have to manually load that Lua. Okay, so I re highly recommend doing that, otherwise you'll forget about it. All right, so that was all the Lua's. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to go back down to my downloads. Okay, so now the EXE. Let's talk about that. I recommend putting it in a folder somewhere where you guarantee you have admin rights. So, because what it's going to do is going to write, it's going to make a new folder. It'll, you'll have problems. It'll tell you that you can more than likely. Um, just put it anywhere that, you know, you're able to add a folder, add a file. It's fine. Um, in this particular case, like I said, I got some versioning. I download 2.7. I'm not running that. Um, run 2.8. So just to show you what it looks like, I have a folder. I just call it 2. I just put it in here. So I got a that exe, a key. Um, a key allows for some additional features to be unlocked in Silmaril. All I would say the core features that is pretty common out there, uh, geomancy, enhancing, curing, debuffing, yada yada, all those really core things. You don't need a key, just download off GitHub. If you want to try it out, just download it and load it up. You don't need a key. Uh, most of the stuff you have. Um, I will say one of the main goals that I had on this was efficiency. I used to run multiple instances of a cure, please, and it, it, it bogs your system pretty good. Um, so when I did this, my, my whole focus was to be very, very efficient um, because uh, I had problems with my PC, with running six, with everything going. So um, that being said, anyway, for as an example, I'm just going to move my key file out just so I'll show you what it looks like, what you have available for features without, whoops. Okay, and the config file is made when it opens. Let me, I guess, just fire this up. And it also made a settings folder. So nothing really happened, right? Um, doesn't look very interesting. So, the reason that happened was because my in-game Lua's haven't been loaded. So I'm going to load a Lua on one character, Kurin here. Uh, simply do a standard forward slash Lua load Silmaril. You can see it loaded up there fine. And uh, a sync light came on and you see a, a flashing com light. Sync light uh, essentially the way this works is it takes all the information from Windows 4. There's a resource folder in Windows 4, if you didn't know. And 
takes the pertinent information and loads it into this application. This is just this is just an application here, right? So it stores it all in memory. Then the com light is simply UDP packets coming from your game, cool in here, is just sending information up. And then when Silmar wants to do something, it just sends an action packet down. Well, not an action packet, but it sends an action um, command. And then the Lua then sends out the corresponding you know, packet or action or whatever it's doing. So that's the, that's the data flow. It all originates on the game side, the Lua side. It's just sending constant information up. You know, uh, Right now, the default is two-tenths of a second. You can change it, but for the most part, you want to see, this is very important, the blinking com light. That's so you know, that, that ensures that you have a connection between your in-game Lua and the, you know, I'll just call, I guess, the server. Now, this handles all six, uh, uh, more than six, but for the most part, it most people are going to run six. Uh, if you want to check what version you are, just simply go to the about right it shows yep i don't have a key file but i'm on the 2.8.1 betas okay so what i'm going to do now real quick is i'm going to do a send to the others so um that loaded the other lures on the other tunes uh you can saw you know you saw that they kind of came up right so now we're talking. That essentially is all of the installation. Lou is loaded. Talking to the Silmaril. Now all you do is configure Silmaril to do whatever you want to do. Um, real quick, just to show you kind of how it plays out. Uh, gray things. Uh, those are the keys. Okay, I give keys out typically for for. To the pat patrons, I'll have a you know a link down below to you know my GitHub site and my patron and the Discord channel, uh, Discord channel uh, where you know you can ask questions, have requests, you know feature requests and so forth, but. I will show you real quick. Let's just, just to show you how it works, I'm just going to put on, oh, let's just do Indy Fury, right? So I just simply configured uh, Morwen here. I believe that's my Geo there. And I'm just going to see if you cast Geo Fury. Okay, very simple, right? Geo Fury. So you can see how it works when I turn them on. Uh, you know, I'll just simply send a command down here. So there's a lot of configurations. You're going to want to save it. So I'm going to show you how the saving works because that's really important because if you start off your structure uh, wrong, it's really hard to scale. And, you know, you're not leveraging a lot of the, the, the neat capabilities that you can get. So in this particular instance, I'm just going to save one character at a time for now. It knows that you're a geo with a sub mage or a sub job of a white mage. And of course, it prefixed a name to it. Click there, no problem. Right, there wasn't a file there. Uh, it made one. Okay. Well, when you configure all these characters, you know, like this is on Geomancy, but if you, you know you start picking all these job abilities and you know you you got all this stuff you got to do. I mean, it gets pretty. Each one has got their own little you know tweaks on them that. You don't really want to remember, like, man, I don't know, what did I, did I, what did I change on her? Then you, you know, instead of going click each save, because you know each one of these little windows corresponds to that one player. On the left here, on this hamburger menu, it's a global, right? So in this case, if I want to just do a save all, I can click the save button, and you notice I don't see the one file there. It's still there. Um, I'll just show you real quick. Oh, also, uh, you'll notice that these windows, they're what they call always on top. If you don't want it, there's a pin you can hit so that they're not in your face all the time. 
So there's your file. That's the file that I had generated. So it's there. But when you do a, a these, like I said, these globals, if I do a save all, um, you're not going to see it. The reason is it's selecting a folder, right? So if I do select the folder, it's going to generate all six of my settings at once. Same thing. If I want to load one character's specific file, um, I could do that. It shows me I loaded that. Or I can load an entire folder, and you can see I loaded all of them at once. Okay? But that gets problematic when you're like, uh, instead of changing... You know, each one of these for a different fight, because maybe you want, you know, Sortie, Odyssey, Dynamis, completely different profiles. You want magic-based weapon skills you know, with malaise and these core roles, but then you want to do physical on a different fight or an ambuscade. Uh, I always say a save ambuscades and folders. You know, it just makes it easy, because guess what? They're going to roll around anyway. So a lot of times I'll just do like... Um, something like that, right? So I made an ambuscade folder, and in there I'll be like, this month that I'm recording it is actually just, let's just call this one Trolls, right? So now I configure Trolls, all my Circle Blades, and all that other stuff, and I'm going to hit just Save, Ambuscade, Trolls. So now, if I ever want to load it, and there's in-game scripts and commands, which I'll cover in later, but now I can load them by whole, uh, you know, sections or specialized content. So I recommend putting them all under settings. Reason being is I'll show you real quick. I'm going to close this. Okay, so I closed Silmaril. If you have the right main job, sub job, and player, it automatically loads the profiles you have here under settings. It's not going to automatically load the ones here when you when it first time to load. Of course, if you want to change it, you just, I'm just going to poke it. It remembers the last um, folder you did. There, I loaded trolls. Now all those profiles have been loaded. I don't have to go individual ones. So that's pretty, pretty key and just not getting frustrated with trying to configure all the stuff. Just you know, get in the habit. I just, you know, it's smart enough to it will automatically load the right ones as long as you're on the right job, sub job, and player. Like I don't need to tell Tour in here that he is a monk warrior when I load it. It just knows when I do the the folder globals. Here, say for instance, I have uh, Medros and uh, Morwen might be my cores. But, like, I configured Maedros, right? But I don't want to do it again. So, instead, what I'm going to do is just open it, and I'm going to put, you know, that you know that core, right? That's fine. You can do that. And then I'll just save it again, and when I resave it, it'll be the right one. But that way, you can, like, duplicate um, without having to manually configure all, if you have, like, jobs or something. So, that's... I wouldn't say real quick, but that is a, a summary, essentially, what uh, you have to do to get this thing installed, get it talking, uh, some of the saving and file manipulation that you have to look for. And then, like I said, globals, all this type of stuff is all based off of uh, the file, the config. So it's going to create that when you first time load it. And, you know, again, you don't have to have the key. That's just showing a lot of stuff is blocked out. Uh, but, again, questions, comments, issues, feel free to post in the Discord channel. I will, do, uh, I will be making further videos to go into more depth with specific uh, functions and features. So, thank you.